Okay, I think there is like an obsession in my game as a strategy to try to completely block out the opponent's options like entirely. And eventually you're running out of mines and arrows and they can always like, if they realize that you're doing it, I think they can always just like work another way out. Um, and eventually, I mean, I don't know, it's hard to explain. My game is like high level. We need some smart peeps to come into the game and play it. Once the game's metagame is discovered, then I can work on improving the game. But, um. <laughs> Yeah, I'm taking a break for now. I just want to see more people playing. I want more people in like the greater than 200 elo, 200 points. It's okay. I can't force anyone to play right now. It's not a big deal. Holding circles to the end. They are good, yeah. I won overall, but I bled a lot of points. Which means the gap is being closed. And also... Some of the games I played... I, 
just kind of folded over. Like, I was, like, weak in some of the games. In some of the games, I was weak. No, I'm pr I'm getting botted, I think. It's fine. Twitch can handle it if they fucking want to handle it. I have not played Go, but yes, Go is a game, Go is a game, Go is a game, it is a game, Go is defeated by Alpha Zero, well, it's not like Go is necessarily defeated, but all the humans were defeated. Do you care to elaborate? Also, Xanatex, you wouldn't happen to be a... would you? Go is not defeated. The humans are defeated. The humans are defeated. I just mean it's defeated in that, like, greater than human performance is achieved. Not that there's necessarily no further to climb. You're not A, okay. I actually did not see the documentary, but I d actually I might have. I don't know. I read enough about it. I don't need to see a documentary. Yeah, DeepMind is really cool, and I think a documentary being made about that is actually kind of totally reasonable. It's like, here, an actual thing happened. We have achieved something. We've achieved superhuman performance on this game. That's really complicated. It's demonstratively true. It's true. It's demonstratif demonstratively true. Okay, there's a thing in my game that happens. Uh, 
There's a thing in my game that happens. There's a thing in my game that happens where you have two options. You have two squares your color that you can get to and maybe win on that turn. With one of the squares, the other square is not yet one turn away from victory. But they're empty squares. The closer square, maybe, you sh if you play on it and they don't block you, then you win right there. So, their response is like, "Uh oh, there's danger right now. I could, I can should take care of this," and so they block it. And then. The next turn, you're like, oh, well, now I'll do my second best option, which is this square. And then they block that square, too, because it's also the biggest threat after that square. So if you decide to play like this move that could get you a win right away, and they do the obvious block... then they could actually end up getting kind of a big advantage because they block both your options and that could like turn the game in their favor but if you know that the obvious block is probably coming then you can use that turn to lay like a plus or an X on your backup square before they block that too and then you can set up on them with the options that you get out of that, which can win you a game. And that block that they're supposed to do, like that, it's such a threat because you could just you could just go for it and win, you snatch the win right there. But it's kind of calculated, where you could go for the other option too and try to. Stuff. It depends on the situation, kind of. It kind of depends. It kind of depends. Two options to kill should be unblockable. Well, it's not necessarily unblockable. It's not necessarily unblockable. But you got some... You have this situation where, like... You could either snatch the win, or you could set up for the win. Or... Or, you could get blocked all the way. No, the circle is blockable with two different... Okay, the circle can be blocked by a circle. Circle can block circle. And reclaim can block circle, too. But only if it's only your color, so they're not circling to win. They're not circling to win if it's a reclaim circle collision. But if it's a circle circle collision, you can block it. But that is like the riskiest move in the game because you're literally just handing them the win if they don't circle it. So if they do any other move. So it's like you have to guess and know and like typically in a situation some sometimes in situations where you can circle to win you have enough turns left where you could just spend your time blocking them in really hard. So let's say you start blocking them in. Any one of those turns that you're blocking them could be you just snatching the victory. And they have to know the same turn that you go for it. But in other situations, you can't delay too many turns because you can't actually block them out. It's more like, uh-oh, they're going to win, like... Not this turn, but the next turn. 
So I better circle now, but that makes the circle really obvious, so do you go for it or not? And you can, you know, just, you could just make a block, but then if they decide to make any progress and don't get blocked by you, if they have a lot of options, then they can draw or win or whatever, so you can lose victory. You can lose the win by delaying the circle placement if they have a lot of options. How hard is it to learn the game? Uh, I don't know. You just have to be a little motivated to play a few rounds and then start to understand what's going on. Then the more you play, the more you understand. I don't know. It might be. I don't know. Chess has a couple like silly rules like I don't know, whatever. It's fine. Then if you think chess is easy, then I think you could learn my game without much problem. Let me turn on Do I have sound on? Yes I do. Okay. Uh,
my engaging with the stream. There's nothing to really engage with. I don't have a preferred nickname. People call me Narcy. I feel it's impossible to talk to my audience. It's like no one in my chat is like a person. It's like I'm waiting here for all eternity for something, <laughs> but it's just not happening. I don't doubt that there's some kind of like optimal distribution of choices based on uneven situations. I'm sure a bot could be made for my game and that could, it could crush the humans, but I don't know though because maybe the game actually at the top level is not that deep. Maybe there's like a repeatable kind of draw thing that happens. I don't know what happens. I mean, I don't know. I feel like it wouldn't necessarily be draw, but like, I think there's a lot of moments in the game that come down to like this kind of woo, like different, different, like, uh, like, I don't think you're going to draw every game because simultaneous moves, so you might be able to get some victories, but also get some losses in like an even kind of way where it's like both players end up like as they approach like infinity games, the score is really close or something. I don't know. An API. So the API serves like the state of the game and everything and like I don't know. I don't know. Have I played games with a longer timer? Um I have not played games with a long timer, but I could set that up. Time per move, 45 minutes.
or two hours, two hours and 15 minutes per move or something. Or one day per move, 24 hours per move. I'm blue. What is depth in a game? What is depth? What is depth in a game? 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 What is depth? What is depth in a game? What is depth in a game? What is depth in a game? No one has an answer. Okay, here we go. Sorry, what? English, motherfucker. Do you speak it? It means you get your color to them. It's like a connected path that lets you spread your color into their base, into their source.
Okay, okay timeless eye. <laughs> Is there like an optimal build? So you just pick the best fucking sword and enchant it with the best OP shit? Or is it more of a creative kind of feel out, feel out what you like? And... Yay. I'm just trying to talk about something else right now, eh, Lamau? Well, I'm asking, what is depth? What is depth? What is depth? But I'm assuming long run though, with something like Skyrim, it's like trivial to get any weapon you want. It's trivial to, to craft any fucking thing you want because you can figure out the game and play through it and do it. And then you're like, okay, cool, great. Now I'm not gonna play the game until they release it on the fucking Ninten new Nintendo Switch XL 2026. I read Serlin. I'm sure I read some play to win posts fucking forever ago. amount of possible solutions that the game gives you to the same problems. There's always going to be an optimal solution for whatever parameter, but that's not depth. I'm talking depth like you play the game for 10 years with people and then you just want to keep playing it. Why? Why do you want to keep playing it? I can have a different experience every time I play this game. How is it different? Why is it different every time? 
in what ways is it different? How do those different experiences overlap? Where, where is the difference? Where is the difference that is happening so much? Okay, so procedural generation. I don't know what the word friend means. The height of the skill ceiling. The height of the skill ceiling. Well, what if going up the skill ceiling comes becomes like degenerate? How do you prevent it from becoming degenerate to have the travel for the skill ceiling? be a worthwhile and meaningful experience. You don't dictate the rules, your community does. Sorry? What do you mean? True, timeless eye, true. If we're talking about, yeah, something that needs a seed because it's random every time. I'm talking about something else, Isla Mao. Please chill.
Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So once it is known and demonstrated, like, what the meta is, then it becomes no longer, like, a quest or something. It becomes too much, like, a discipline. Do you know what I mean? Like, an optimal strat emerges, and then the player base knows it. Suddenly it feels less worthy of aspiring to be the greatest at that. Unless you can break through with some... Innova is this about innovation, or is it about... It's about, like, feeling and innovation. Like, you need to be able to let people feel and innovate, like, in the game. In the experience of playing it. We're no longer discovering, we're just optimizing. Games are necessarily limited. Games are limited, but like you can push those limitations like into outer space. Higher skilled players might like a larger board where there's more room for complexity. Yeah, I'm not sure of the effect of a large board. It also, that would then skew like the number of things you get. So like you might want to adjust like the stockpile as well. Okay, so how do you make a game? How do you make a game then that's really hard to... How do you prevent there from being such limitations? Yeah, so we're talking about a game that continuously changes. Um, so it is, you have to adapt to it. And there's complexity in it. So, yeah. So you need something that's not the same every time. Which is also why speedrunning feels like this, like, feel like some sort of classical piano performance except very uh very strict and uh i don't know yeah so link to the best randomizer kind of does this and i'm i'm well aware of this i'm well aware of this Okay, so then you start to recognize kind of general patterns that get generated. Uh, like, so your random generation better be generating something fucking beautiful to really make it long term, right? It's like, oh, I'll just make a roguelike, it'll have a majillion levels, but like, then it's like you're fighting the same enemies and getting the same items over and over and over, and then you just see like, kind of, the same patterns, and, 
you know, sometimes there's like an outlier, then you get used to like what can be possible and what's likely to be possible, and then it becomes dull because you fucking understand it. Yeah, stale. Stale. We can't be having stale. Stale gameplay. No stale gameplay. Okay, why why is StarCraft get stale? Yeah, how do you prevent stale? How do you prevent stale? A subset of optimal builds. A sub a subset of optimal builds. I delay stale. Preventing it is trying to prevent a player from playing. Preventing is like trying to prevent a player from playing. I don't know. I. I think that's too pessimistic. That's too pessimistic for this conversation. We have to be more idealistic and dream. Yeah, part of this with the like, Binding of Isaac example, it's like, s skilled player has basically this little library of knowledge about the game and will know how to make better decisions throughout playing it. So just like kind of has the knowledge and then kind of knows what to do in a better sense. So, yeah. Then once you have that knowledge though, then I guess Bunny of Isaac becomes just a little bit more stale because then you know, oh, well, this is how I want to play this optimally so I can win the Binding of Isaac tournament or whatever. If you make a game truly random, there's no learning curve, it feels like pointless. Yeah. Okay, consider this. Let's think about chess, okay. I mean, chess and Go, you know, they're dominated by bots now, so it feels like, I don't know. Yeah, it becomes chess becomes stale, yeah. Yeah.
stale. How do you prevent stale? You're really selling Binding of Isaac here, Timeless, some of these claims. That it doesn't become stale at all. I understand that there's random seeds and random, like, worlds, but, like, how much random, like, how much can the game make? It can't make anything. There's a, there's a limit to what it can generate as part of its, like, world. I understand synergy, yeah. Yeah, Felio Bolt, I agree with what you're saying. I mean, eventually chess is just going to be a dead game, okay? It's not going to live forever. You think chess is immortal? You think chess and Go are immortal? They will fall. They will be forgotten. Well, not forgotten, but they will not... They will... They will... They will fade. Fade down. Yeah, I mean, NetHack is... NetHack...
Moonfacer's band. Um, I appreciate you all for the discussion, but I feel like we're not, we're not getting to the crux of the issue at all. As good of a ride as possible while they play. Make it fun to discover the mechanics. They'll move on when they do. No, see, letting it be fun for an instant is not good enough. The RNG factor is going to be more of a hindrance in itself, a mixed bag. Possibility can be frustrating, so that's the thing that would worry you. Uh, kind of. It kind of worries me. But. not entirely. I think there is such a thing as good RNG. Good RNG. I mean, like, y like RNG used in a game in a way that makes it more interesting. Is possible in my opinion in my onion okay here's the game that took a while to get stale smash smash When you say a massive design space, I mean, I guess, I guess, yes, yes, I do. I guess so. I'm saying Smash is just like, I just, I can play it like a lot and not need external motivator. I don't need like my Twitch chat celebrating me for me to want to sit down and like play the fuck out of Smash. Like I can just sit, I can just sit and play it and it'll be satisfying to play it.
I wouldn't say things are mechanically difficult. I mean, some stuff can be, but... Like, the... Th like, it's not mechanical difficulty, I think that is in that is intriguing about Smash. There's a little bit of, like... Uh, I'm just thinking about, like, running around as Captain Falcon, like, fucking doing shuffle nares and stuff, and, like, being able to space it and, like, just, like, keep it flowing and going, and just, like, basically just steamroll, like, all these people who are trying to play the game. Um, it's satisfying to be able to play like that. But also playing against good players and having like tough bat tight battles or whatever, <laughs> like it's fun. Another thing Smash does when you say design space, or at least when we're talking about like, you know, every game is different, whoa. Like Smash has a lot of things going on between Smash DI, SDI, or Smash DI, DI, and Rage, which change like how combos and like follow-ups work all the time. like every fucking hit is different there's also like stale moves in that too so like it's just like a lot of overlapping systems that means like situations are a little bit more unique Of someone else that you don't like? Wait, hold on. You're bringing in something else to it, though, Timeless Eye. You're being like, oh, I don't like them and they're beating me, so that's not fun. Okay, find someone who, like, you don't have beef with and then play the game. And it doesn't matter if they beat your ass, because if it, as long as there's no, like, IRL beef then you can just improve and take it as like a learning lesson. If you hate everyone, then you can do what I do and play online. Yeah, I never got into Hearthstone. I don't really know what's going on with that game. You should play someone who's only slightly better than you then. You should find an easier opponent where you can actually get wins on. That's not the game's fault. That's like just a mat like matchmaking. That's like matchmaking.
Smash 4 Switch. We're going to see it in June. Are all my viewers going to scatter? Please scatter away, everybody. Please leave the stream now. Clear off, everyone. Get out of here. It's time for everyone to leave now. Goodbye. You may give me small advice, yes, you can do that. I already kind of know what I want to play. Like, I want to play Smash when it comes out. I want to play... I'll play through Octopath Traveler, Bloodstained... I mean, I understand that Smash is Smash, and I've played Smash before, and that... You know, Bloodstained is probably going to be something like Symphony of the Night. I just like, I don't know, I just kind of don't. I don't know what to spend my time doing, really. Except having more THC, oh yeah.
I just gotta hold on until June, right? Then E3, and then Smash, then Smash release date, and then Smash hype, and then Smash. Ugh. I have like the fire of passion burning within me to play Smash for Switch. I hope I figure out what controller I want to play it with. Maybe the GameCube controller still. Maybe not. Maybe it's a bad idea. I'm, I was just itching to have a conversation. I just want to have a conversation about depth in games because that's an interesting thing. Well, we, we were able to have a bit of dialogue about it, so... Yeah, it, was, it, it wasn't really bloodsuckers as much, you know? heading to sleep soon no we are going to continue to be streaming on twitch.television Spy party, no, 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 no. No. Why do I feel like I would not play it? Even though, you know, sometimes there are good experiences to be had that I'm like too dismissive of and I'd probably miss out on it if I don't really give it a try. But for some reason I kind of don't feel like giving anything a try. I kind of just want to play Smash when it comes out.
I'm losing it. 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 That which flows in and out of me. That which flows in and out of me. That which flows in and out of me. interested in a good conversation which seems to be extremely hard to find on these on these parts uh, <laughs> I would love a good conversation can you provide me with one please no no That's not at you, by the way, Timeless Eye. That's just at the ether. I'm speaking to the ether now. Not to you. I'm not speaking to the current chat. I'm speaking to the ether. Thank you. Thank you for knowing the difference and having enough respect to listen to my words. I appreciate that. That which flows out of me, that which flows. That which flows. That which flows out of me, out of me. I'm gonna be annoying and scare you all away now. I wanna scare you all away now. Bye bye. <laughs> oh. Thank you for seeing the potential of the internet, which a lot of people do not see. That which flows out of me. 
That which flows out of me, that which flows out of me. That which flows out of me, that which flows out of me. That which flows out of me. Blair, you've been way too nice to me, but I really do appreciate it. <laughs> Are you asking if it is the edible that flows out of me? I would not say that it is strictly the edible that flows out of me. It is merely my experience. which I feel kind of down about because I haven't been able to take that which flows out of me and I feel like I've done enough or made enough of a difference You're not being weird. It's not the edible alone. My interest is that which flows out of me. My main interest is that which flows out of me. My main interest is that which flows out of me. My main interest is that which flows out of me. Yeah, I guess like all of it, balls in my face, all of it. <laughs> we have Kanye's warp drive. We are evolving at warp speed. How about that which flows out of you? That which flows out of you that which flows out of you that which flows out of everyone and that which that which affects others that which affects others
um I want to get all excited when all the troll posts arrive because I think I'm getting like raided, which is fun. I want to have fun. I want to have fun. I want to have fun. Don't do math, guys. Don't do math. Don't do math, guys. <laughs>
What do you believe is your purpose in the world? What's your purpose? I'm done with this. I'm done with you. I spend all day surrounded by these degenerates. I ban occasionally. <laughs> Is it a flaw of mine? Actually, I'm just that charitable. <laughs> dot dot come a long way since OOT yes I have read about that world cup world cup of what what Um, this is our 155 of the Narcissorite 24-7 content network. <sighs> How do I know you're not going to like revoke the 20? D <laughs> DK on the side. 2,000 bits, and I will watch your video. 2,000 bit biddies. 2,000 biddies, and I'll watch your video.
How much is 2,000 bits? Well, I get $20. <laughs> I don't know how much you have to pay. Is it two hours long? <laughs> Hijack your auto host. That's so funny because I never go offline, so I'm always hosted by you. Oh. I'm really bored. So fucking bored. <laughs> Earth and why it is a spherical object and not flat. Why are we in three-dimensional space? Why are we in three-dimensional space? Why are we in three-dimensional space? <laughs> Why are we in three-dimensional space? Yeah, space time. Space time. It's so easy to imagine, like, Possibilities beyond possibilities. <sighs> yeah, so the hologram, it's, um, what, the boundary of the observable universe? Uh the area of that in Planck units is the information content of the universe of the observable universe is that true is it true is it true that the area of the observable universe in Planck units is the information content of the observable universe? Is it true?
the number of Planck units that fit on the area of the observable universe is the number of bits in the observable universe. Is that true? Is it true? All right, sorry, DK, I'm gonna decide it's not happening. Though. Is it true? That the number of Planck units that fit on the sur surface, on the area of the surface area of the boundary of the observable universe is the amount of bits in the observable universe. If you took the volume in Planck units, that would be more bits than are in the universe, because it's proportional to the area and not the volume. No, it's surface area. That's why it's called the holographic principle. The information is encoded on the surface. Plonk, plank, whatever the fuck it is. I don't care how you pronounce that shit. Yeah, if you use volume though, that's not that's not the number of bits. It's the area, right? And then it's true, right? The area of the observable universe and plank units. Uh, the amount of Planck air area, whatever, units that fit in the area is proportional to the amount of bits, the amount of information, the amount of information in the observable universe, right? That's true, right? How is that information useful to me? It's talking about the the amount of information in the universe. Like an actual number. At like a finite, it's finite. Finite. Why? Why is it finite? And how do things like 
space, time, and gravity, and like quantum field theory, how do those things happen? There should be a video explaining very clearly how how physicists get concept of binary information out of physical phenomena in relation to things like information on the surface of a black hole and the holographic principle and what it means by like Planck units in the area or whatever like that should I want some like understandable videos talking about those things I found a video. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh no. No, what have I done? Okay. Come on. We got this. Yes. I feel like I've probably watched this video already and it's probably not going to help anything. Okay. Hide this. And this one. 